Good morning, Generation Church. Come on, stand to your feet. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers out there. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord and His goodness. Come on, He's been good, He's been faithful. We thank you, Lord. Have your way here. For who you 
us, rescuing us, Lord, changing our story, Lord. We thank you that you interrupted in the middle of our mess, Lord, in the middle of our chaos, Lord. You stepped in, Lord. Your hand rescued us, God, and redeemed us, and for that we thank you this, Lord. We know this morning you're more than able. You're able to do anything. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly. There's nothing that's impossible for you, God, so this morning we lift our hands lift our voice, lift our hearts, Lord, and just say you're more than able, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. sufficient for me and why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles come on if you believe it raise it up this morning you are more than able yes you are Lord. you are You are, yes, you are, Father. You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Come on, anybody believe He can do it this morning? He can do it. Come on.
raise your voice this morning, church. Because you are more than me. Come on, we believe it this morning. We're not just singing it, Father, we believe it. You are more than able. Yes, you are, Jesus. Oh, you are more than able. We trust you, Father. Take you at your word. You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? I've come a long way. I've seen how you work. Yeah, there's so much goodness and grace. Much more than I deserve. Because I know who I am. Come on, testify this morning. I can't stay where I'm at. We've come this far by faith. Come on. And I just can't turn back. You're not done with me. Yeah. Come on, raise your voice. You're not done with me. Yeah. Oh. There's so much more to the story. This one works. Here's what I know. You walked into a house of miracles. And I know that God meets us here every time we gather. And I don't know what you walked in here with on this Mother's Day. I don't know the kind of weight you're carrying, the kind of pressure you're under. I don't know what your life looks like. But one thing that we know for sure is that in His presence, everything can change. And I'm believing for you, we're believing for you, as we're believing for our own selves, that we're going to walk out of here changed today and transformed today. And I don't know where the level of your faith is today. Maybe you got to lean on your neighbor. Maybe you got to borrow somebody's faith today. But what I do know is that God will meet us where we are. Amen. And so I just want to challenge you throughout this entire church service to lift your hands or to open up your hands and say, God, here I am. Here I am. Whatever you want to say, you can say. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Why? Because there is nothing impossible for you. You believe that, church? 
there's nothing impossible for him come on let's believe that together can we just declare that one more time Gabe let's just declare this together one more time come on let's lift our hands let's fill this room with faith come on he's able he's able come on he's able Come on, he's able. You are more than able. Church, let's give Jesus an ovation of worship. Come on, let's fill this room with praise. Come on, he's good. Come on, he's able. He's good and he's able. You believe that? So good. Hey, my name is Rich Romero, lead pastor here at Generation Church. And we're so blessed that you're here on Mother's Day Sunday. Come on, celebrating all that God is doing, but celebrating, come on, our risen King, amen. Hey, would you welcome somebody this morning? Would you shake, shake someone's hand, hug somebody, welcome someone to Generation, come on. How we doing out there, church? We doing okay? We doing all right? We love you, Next Gen. We love you, G Kids. And we're so happy you're here. If you're joining us online this morning, welcome to Generation. We're so glad you're having church wherever you're having church. And just know that you can lean in right where you are and let us know what you're needing. Let us know how we can serve you. And we pray. That what's happening here in Coral Gables is blessing you and your family. Church, we have an incredible Sunday just plan and prepare for you. I believe it's, you know, even in times of worship like we just had, come on, God is moving and he's already speaking. You believe that? And so even in that same posture of worship, we're going to continue to worship with our ways to give. We believe that giving is part of our posture, part of our time of worship and so our team's going to put those ways right behind me and if you walked in you uh, should have received an envelope you can give in person or you can give digitally today and we're just so thank you in advance for your generosity thank you for making a difference because of your giving we're reaching people and building lives amen and so i just got a few things to put before you as we get ready to really sit back and witness an incredible story and get ready for an incredible message but this summer, man, listen, summer at Generation, it just hits different. And there's just so many things to be excited about, so many things to plan for. And one of those that you need to make sure you're aware of is that we're taking a break from our groups. Typically, we have groups running through summer. We're taking a break on groups this summer, and we're doing something called Summer Sessions. Summer Sessions. Here's what we've dubbed this summer. It's the Summer of Growth. And if maybe you're thinking how you can grow in your biblical literacy this year, how you can grow in your prayer life this year, how you can grow closer to God this year, summer session is something you want to make sure you take a note of, you put a start date on your calendar. What we're doing is for the whole month of June, six classes from you to choose from. You can choose all six if you like. They're going to be taking place at our headquarters space in South Miami. 
on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights. And you're going to be being able to hear from all of our leadership. And just take it a step this year. Take a step this year to say, you know what? I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow into the person that God's called me to become and to be. And so summer session is the place where you need to be this year. Amen. And so more information on all of this, on what the classes are going to be about, when they're going to be, uh, who's going to be leading them. That's all going to be sent out to you via email this week. But just make sure you jot down that date. Amen. As well as our summer session. Come on, where are the parents in the house this morning? Parents, G-Kids, Next Gen. We have a parents workshop. A parents workshop on May 17th. You don't want to miss that. This is a night where not only are you just in good company, but you're also well equipped. We believe in resourcing our families, equipping our parents with everything you need to raise your children in the ways of the Lord. Our team has been working endlessly to make sure that this night is everything you need it to be. To not only meet other parents that are running the same race you're running, but to also make sure that these resources that we're going to be training you on and putting within you or before you is going to be a blessing for you and your family. So that's May 17th. And as well as all the things we've got for parents, we've got VBS coming. We've got our 12 conference, which is for students coming. And then we have our marriage retreat happening at the end of July. And so all of that information is on Planning Center. Make sure you're active on that app. Make sure you're registering for all the things that are coming your way. And lastly, happy Mother's Day. Come on, happy Mother's Day. You guys are heroes. My wife who's here in front row, she is uh, not just a hero in our house, but a hero in this community where we love you. We're so blessed to have you. She's going to be bringing an incredible award in just a moment. But we have a little gift for all the moms outside. It's some lip gloss. It says, Mom, you are the bomb because it's lip balm. So make sure you pick one of these things up. Take a picture as well. It's a beautiful outside, special donuts as well. And it's just a great day to celebrate and to be in the house of God. Amen. And so with that being said, I want you to turn your attentions to the screen for a powerful story. We've been married now for nine years. We have two beautiful kids uh, from our marriage, uh, Avery Joy and Liam Brave. It's been, it's been amazing, but of course, like any story, it's had its challenges. Being a pastor's kid, many times you get involved into the church. In our marriage, I, I didn't even realize how involved I was at times, uh, to the point that I was at home, but I wasn't really there. Like, I was probably in a call, or I was thinking about something that had to be done in the church, um, and I wasn't really giving my full uh, attention to my family. I remember just being at work, I kind of started having like the attention of um, a guy from work um, and it turned into a nine month relationship. Just all these lies, the enemy was just speaking into my life and I thought I was making the right decisions. Um, I thought I was doing the best for me. And it got to a point that my husband gave me an ultimatum. He's like, if you don't leave, if you don't break this relationship, um, you have to move out of the house. And that happened. I moved out of the house and I kept on with this relationship. In this whole process, we visit Generation. I, re I remember having this conversation with you where I'm telling you like, you could go on your own. Uh, we, we could maybe like sit separately, you remember that? And you told me like, yeah, if, if I have to go on my own, I'm not going at all. I knew deep down inside of me that the moment I stopped going to church, um, the enemy was gonna take full control over our family and my life. Um, so I also didn't want uh, I didn't want that to happen yeah. either. I don't think that God wanted this to happen, but he obviously, believing what his word says, he turns things for his glory. Like, I tear my Achilles a few days later uh, um, from from separating. And my, my mom is taking care of me. I didn't know, but you and her are texting back and forth. And But then she finally tells me, hey, 
Jen wants to take care of you. She feels like it's her job to take care of you. I'm like, I'm fighting it. I'm like, I don't want it at the time. Yeah. I didn't want that. I just had the need to to just be there for him during this hard time. Um, not only because of what our marriage was going through, but also as him, what he was going through by himself, like, you know, this injury unexpectedly that happened. Yeah. The Lord was little by little speaking into my life. And all of a sudden, I feel like there was just like a switch um, that turned on. I kind of like started questioning it too. I was like, why did I stop loving him? Or why did I say this? Why did I do this? Why did I, like, he's a good man. He's a good father. He's such a great person. Like he makes me laugh like no other person. I was like, he's my best friend. Um, so the Lord just turned on that switch and I started seeing him in a different way. I wanted for our marriage to um, be restored. I wanted us to get back together. I wanted our family to be together again. But there were just so many things that, and lies that the enemy would put in my head, like shame and, oh, like, like what's gonna happen now with the family? Like you have to say sorry to the family and like just so many other things um, and questions like how is this gonna happen? How am, how am I even gonna tell him again that I kind of wanna date him again and like just so many different questions but I just, it got to a point that I was like, Lord, if you're putting this in my heart, I give you the space that you need. I make space, Lord, for you to move, for you to restore, for you to work in my heart, um, work in my mind, for this to happen again. God doing what he does best, he showed up right on time. I mean, when we thought maybe there was no hope, like literally we went to the marriage retreat. My, my only expectation was that, Lord, if you're gonna do something, you have till this day, like this weekend, that's it. Like, like past this, I can't continue to, to, to deal with this any longer. We were getting ready to our For the last, last session. night, yeah. last session. Um, and while I was just doing my makeup, um, I felt the need to say sorry to my husband which I hadn't said sorry. And the whole process, the that whole was the process. first time, yeah. Yeah, and we just, I remember us just like crying and hugging and it was such a beautiful moment. That fall, we started Freedom, uh, which that, that for us was a game changer. Like, there, there, there are things that you don't even realize that are there from our childhood. Yeah. Um, things that happened because of what happened to us in our marriage, so many different things that the Lord used those 12 weeks to speak um, and really truly find freedom. There were so many areas that the Lord had to work in me that I didn't know that I had, that I had to deal with. Um, I feel like the Lord really, really um, worked in my shame. He truly, truly restored my life I feel like it was in freedom I was found and I know I am a new creation Amen. Yeah. and I am made new honestly I love our story I love our story because it, it, it shows what the Lord can do uh, what he did do in our life it's not about what Jen did it's not about what I did um, it's what the Lord did um, and what he's still doing, he's still working with us. I think something very key to remember is, is his goodness is not based on if he does something or not, or if he comes through or not, he's good, period. You know, But the fact that he did what he did in our life is what we say in our home, he's been so good. He's yeah. been too good. He's been so good. Yeah. yeah. Would you stand to your feet? been so good, Jesus. Promises you've given.
singing that now but really quick Romans chapter 8 there's a question that Paul poses and he asks this question he says can anything separate me from the love of Christ a few verses later he answers that by making this bold statement and he says I am convinced that nothing can ever separate me from the love of Christ not life not death nor angels, nor demons. Nothing can ever separate me from the love of Christ. And I don't know how you walked in today, but I need to remind you that Jesus loves you. You may have walked in the highest of highs. You may have walked in the lowest of lows today. He loves you the same. You may have yesterday been doing whatever you wanted to do this past week, or you may have been 
I don't know, reading the whole entire Bible last night. I don't know. He loves you the same. There's nothing you can ever do to ever separate God's love from you. So if there's something that you could take away from today, please hear me. Jesus loves you. Right where you're at, Jesus loves you. He wants to meet you. And we're going to sing this again. And I just want you to meditate on, on the love of Christ. You may never understand it, but he offers it freely to us. Let's sing it out. You have been so good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. So good. So good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. family just to honor Jen and Larry I just want to honor their bravery because on a day like today Mother's Day they decided to share their story and we know that it's not easy to share our stories. But they decided to do that today. So we're going to cover them in protection as a church family. So let's just extend our arms to them. Father, we thank you for this powerful, mighty couple who as they sing and as they speak, the Lord is breaking chains. The Lord is freeing people. The Lord is averting people from temptation. God, we thank you for their yes. Lord, we thank you because they pursue you above all else. They don't pursue a platform. They don't pursue a title. Lord, we thank you because they pursue you. And we declare in Jesus' name that the plan the enemy has for them is crushed in the name of Jesus. That the plan the enemy had to come to steal, kill, and destroy is stopped right now in Jesus' name. But we cover them with divine protection. Today, the Congregation of Generation Church extends prayers over their family, prayers of protection over their family, that no weapon can pierce in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. God is so good. I told them a million things before they came on platform, but I'm just so proud of them. Um, just to be able to walk alongside. I didn't share this earlier. I didn't share this right now, but last service I shared that the first time I actually met with Jen, um, we met for lunch. And I don't know if you've ever been to one of these kinds of lunches, but it's one of those lunches where you both order food and no one eats. And it was hard, and I'll never forget her look dead in my eyes and say, Tina, I, I feel nothing for him. I don't want anything to do with him. And being a good friend, I said, I get it. But I'm not worried about your feelings right now. Because choices lead and feelings follow. Amen. And all that I need from you, Jen, all that God needs is for you to say yes to him. And when we can say yes to Jesus, when we can open the door to the God that is knocking, he can do anything. Amen. So let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. 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 If we can all just take a seat, take a seat. If you are a mom, though, I'm going to pause you right here. Stand up. Stand up. Mama's in the house. Let's go. Everybody else, y'all sit. Mama's of the house. Get, get back up, Danny. She's 34, 33 weeks pregnant, so she's sitting up and getting down is not easy as we all standing up today know. But moms, if there's a mom next to you, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the hard work you put in for your family. Thank you for the early mornings and the late nights and the middle of the nights and whatever other time that was. 
Thank you for your yes. Thank you for constantly pushing to advance your legacy. Thank you for the hard work you put in. We appreciate you and we love you. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> Amen. What a story. What a story from Larry and Jen. I call them Jerry. Jerry. That's just what I, I call them. That's their um, celebrity nickname. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, my name is Tina Romero. I have the privilege and honor of being married to Pastor Rich. He's the best guy in the whole universe. I could just, that's it. He's, no, but just to honor you for a second, he leads this house so well. He works hard for this community. He sac has sacrificed his life time and time again for the Lord. And I just want to honor you and thank you for being the best pastor, dad, and husband. I got home yesterday from established girl. Come on. We were an established girl yesterday. For those of you who couldn't make it, you missed it. And for those of you um, who don't know what established girl is, what we do is we get together, all the ladies of generation, and um, we just have a good time. We take pictures, we dress up, we eat, and we also just like received such an impartation from the Holy Spirit. God moved yesterday. I mean, we heard testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies yesterday at Established Girl that were completely life-changing. And so it was just a wonderful time. Uh, Established Girl finished. We took out all the decorations, tore it down. And then I head home to like 600 surprises at home. So 600 surprises. And it was just such a fun day. Um, so I'm excited to get back home to all my surprises today. He got me a chicken coop. Yes, if you're wondering, my Instagram algorithm is chickens. So I've been wanting a chicken coop, and he got me one, and I'm so excited. Um, yeah, so uh, if you don't know me, like I said, my name is Tina Romero, and I'm just so honored to be before you today on Mother's Day. Um, being here in general is the honor of my life that we get to do this. Um, we got to plant this church six years ago, and we're just, we're just doing it, right? And it's, uh, it's such an honor and a privilege. So uh, today, after Established Girl and all these testimonies, I have been praying for a few months now. I only preach every so often, so I get months to prepare. Pastor Rich gets six days, but I don't know how you do it, honey, but it, he's amazing. I've been praying for a few months on this message and what, um, what I would share today. For the, for the past year in particular, um, a lot of our leadership, uh, the women in our leadership, have been praying over the same thing, and it, would, it was the word of our testimony, right? We've been praying over this for about a year and how God would work this. If you don't know, uh, the word for, our, for this year, the word for Generation Church for 2024 is we see revival. Amen. That is our word for the year. And so we've just been praying that God would move in our city, move in our community, so I pray that today's message blesses you. If you have your Bible, we're going to be reading out of John chapter 4. Um, if you don't have your Bible, they're going to put it on screen behind me. And you can always pull it up on your phone, on the Bible app. But we're going to be reading out of John chapter 4. And he, this story, if you just look at the top title right there above where it says John chapter 4, it's about the Samaritan woman. So I'm going to read you some scripture. It's going to be long. Stay with me. You guys are with me? All right, so we're going to start reading on John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, He had to go through Samaria on the way. So Jesus right now was baptizing people. Actually, his disciples were baptizing people. The Pharisees at this time see them baptizing so many people, get a little jealous, start to make some problems for Jesus and his disciples. So Jesus, being the wise man that he was, saw the drama and walked away, right? So he walks away and he says, I'm going to head out of here and I'm going to go to Galilee. So on the way to Galilee, he stops at a place, right? So it says, eventually, verse 5, eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well at noon time. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. 
She was alone at the time because his, he was alone at the time because his disciples had gone to the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to do to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, "Are you a Jew and I a Samaritan woman? Why are you asking me for a drink?" Verse 10, Jesus replied, "If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water." Verse 11, but sir, don't, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and the swell's very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How, how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied in verse 13, anyone who drinks of this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I have to give will never thirst again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal Life, Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, and then I'll never thirst again. I won't have to come here to get water. And then verse 16 says, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. And here's where our story starts, right? We come across the Samaritan woman, and according to Scripture, we don't really know a lot about her. We don't know a lot about who she is. We don't know a lot about where she's coming from. We don't know a lot about her story. All we know is that she's here minding her own business, bucket in hand, right, going to get some water. Does anybody here watch the show The Chosen? I love that show, super endorsed, right? Incredible show, not just good Christian TV, but just like good TV. We know the difference, but this is good TV, right? So if you haven't started watching, watching The Chosen, I totally recommend it. Prepare yourself to cry like all the first 10 episodes, but then, but then you'll watch it without crying and you'll just enjoy it. But th this show, The Chosen, got me kind of thinking about a little bit of her backstory, right? Like who is this girl? Who is this girl and, um, and where does she come from? To be honest with you, I've, I've read this story countless times. I grew up in a Christian school from kindergarten to 12th grade every year, probably multiple times I've heard this story. And uh, I've actually preached this story a few times. And never, ever did I ever think of where she came from, what her story was. Why was she at the well at noontime? Why was she here? How did she get there? Right? For the moms in the room, we have to do mom math before we leave the house, right? What does that mean? That means that before we can get our keys and walk out the door, we have to make sure that the snacks are packed, right? And before the snacks, it's the water bottles. And the water bottles have to have ice because your kids don't want to drink lukewarm water, right? And then before the water bottles, we have to make sure the kids got dressed. So then we have to think about how long is it going to take to get my kids dressed. And if you have three kids like me under the age of six, you know it's going to take at least half an hour. And if they're complaining about what they're wearing, longer than that, right? And if you have girls, you got to do the hair and then there's the bow. And then before you get, I can keep going, right? Do you guys want to go down this? This is my life. Anyway, we got to do mom math before we leave the house. That means that we have to plan upon plan and plan again to see how we're going to do this well. How are we going to walk out of our house and everything worked out just right? I'm a planner. Anybody else in the room a planner? It's not all girls. There's guy planners out here. I didn't, I didn't know this really how intensely guys can be at planning, like how intense guy planners can be. But um, there are guy planners and girl planners out here, and I'm a planner. Um, it really upsets me when things interrupt my plans. You know, if I had a schedule to adhere to, to make sure I got everything done that day, I want to make sure that nothing gets in my way. But we live in Miami, and I drive on the turnpike every day. So you already know that I'm going to see a few accidents, and it's going to back up my time, which I planned for. <laughs> Uh, but maybe, right, there's a delayed flight. Maybe there is, you know, something that's just out of your control, right? So we see this Samaritan woman get to the well. We don't know. Maybe she's a free bird. Maybe she just walked out of her door with her bucket and went to the well, and it just so happened to be 12 o'clock. Maybe she planned everything out very well. But our story looks a lot like hers, right? Because she finds herself at the well. 
If you're writing notes today, point number one is the journey to the well. The journey to the well. At Established Girl yesterday, we gave all the ladies these cute little notebooks because we believe in the power of writing notes. We believe in the power of a congregation who writes down what they're hearing. Number one, it keeps you connected with the message. But number two, when the Lord speaks to you today, and he will, you get to turn back and look at what he said and remind yourself of the words that he's already spoken to you. Because the enemy's biggest tactic and the biggest lie he can he can give is to make us forget what God has already said so here we are in point number one the journey to the well Uh, we have an opportunity to have pastor Jedediah Thurner on our board uh, the board at Generation Church if you've ever been to established track we go in depth about how Generation Church uh, started why we planted what our church leadership and eldership and government looks like. And he actually sits on our board and he has this quote that he says, and it's that we can get there early or we can get there late. But if we don't get there on God's time, we're on the wrong time. So you can get there early or you can get there late. But if you, can get there on, if you don't get there on God's time, you're on the wrong time. And write this down if you're writing notes. The power of temptation lies in its timing. I'll say it again. The power of temptation lies in its timing. Now, our timing can be disrupted or our plans can be right on point, And we can still be on the wrong time. Why? Because the wrong time looks a little bit like this. It looks a little bit like having a conversation with the opposite sex coworker right after you got into a, a fight with your spouse. Nobody. No, just me. No. It looks a little bit like the late night angst of a hard day that makes you want to walk to the fridge when everyone's sleeping and eat the whole pint of ice cream, even though food is your temptation. Nobody else. And this one for sure, no one has ever, ever experienced, is when you've had a long day, the timing is just right, and the bottle of wine just looks like it can fix everything. Nobody else for sure. Just me. But timing is crucial. And I try to line up my day just right, and I'm sure you do too. Um, when we go to Disney, we're Di- any Disney people? No, don't raise your hand. They're going to hate. Don't. Okay, now I'm a Disney person. Just kidding. Um, we have annual passes. We love to go to Disney uh, just because it's fun time with the kids. We ride rides, eat good food. And I'm a planner, and my planning mode goes into, like, hyperdrive at Disney. Um, it's intense. Yeah, so I plan like what the whole family is going to wear, when we're going to, like down to the socks. I plan the route we're going to walk so that we can be at the right restaurant with the reservation at the right time. And then I even plan like what rides we're going to ride when. But I have kids (laughs) and Disney is Disney, right? So even though I could have like a literal map and an agenda, somehow, some way, my plans always get messed up. I even planned out my life. As like a 12-year-old, I planned out my life. I knew exactly what I wanted to happen when. Did anyone else do that as like a little kid? So weird, right? I even at 12 years old made a list of what I wanted my husband to look like. Yeah. Yeah. On that list was like a few inches taller than me and wears glasses. Why did I, like, was I really attracted to a guy a few inches taller than me that wears glasses? I don't know, but when I met Richie, he was wearing these little thin baby blue glasses. And that was it. And I just knew. That's weird, guys. Don't do that. But I had planned out my life. I knew who I wanted to marry. I knew when I wanted to go to school. I knew when I wanted to buy a house. I knew when I wanted to start my career. I knew when I wanted to have babies. I had everything ready to go. Everybody like older the age of 30 knows that that's baloney because nothing ever goes how we plan. But when I decided, the day that I decided I wanted to be a mom, I thought I was just gonna get pregnant. Getting pregnant was never a thing in my mind. Like, that that took time. And so uh, two years later, we were still trying to have a baby. 
And it was really hard on me. Um, it was really frustrating to not have what I wanted when I, ha when I wanted it, to not have things go the way I had planned, right? But maybe some of us in here have plans. We have plans for a business. We have plans for our family. We have plans for a financial status. We have plans for a career. Or we have plans to be in a particular friend group. Silly things like that. But then there are also things that happen to us in life that we didn't plan for, right? Maybe we didn't plan to struggle with addiction. Maybe we didn't plan on living with grief. Maybe we didn't plan on getting divorced or being depressed or having a crippling self-esteem or getting into that accident or having too much debt or losing a parent or losing a child or losing that house. Maybe we didn't plan on having five husbands and not even being married to the one we're living with now. And this is where we see the Samaritan woman. This is where we meet her in her unplanned story. But there is someone here in this story that on this day and at this time had a plan. Right? We hear of Jesus. Jesus that knew all along that at 12 o'clock, he was going to be at this specific spot, right? So we see Jesus at work baptizing people. He leaves, right, because of the Pharisees. He's like, let me go this direction, knowing exactly who was, he was going to meet along the way. So Jesus gets to see this all. And this is even, I would say, even more special to Jesus than this is to the Samaritan woman because Jesus has been watching this well for years. The story of this well is a big story, right? It's been the, the idea, the, the plot of this well has been around for a long time. Jesus has been watching, right? Genesis 1-1, we know the creation of man. The Bible says that God is the word and the word is God and that God, the word was here from the beginning of time. And so we know that Jesus is watching the creation of man in Genesis 1-1, the sin of man in Genesis 3. He sees the floods cover the earth in Genesis 7. He sees the Tower of Babel come up and come down in Genesis 11. He sees the dispersion of people into nations. He sees the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis chapter 19. He sees people walk through, through tragedy. He sees families split. He sees moms like Rebecca that are waiting for their promised child. He sees that very mom become pregnant not with one baby but with twins and these boys names are Esau and Jacob so the story of Esau and Jacob is a strange strange story I encourage you to read it in Genesis chapter 25 but it's a story of a stolen birthright hairy arms and sister wives but God has a way of taking the ugly and making it beautiful. God has a way of taking ashes and giving you beauty. God has a way of giving you something you didn't earn. So Jacob, in his story, inherits this land. Inherits this land that wasn't supposed to be his. Is given a gift that he didn't earn. And he builds this well. This well who in, how in so many ways represents a story of someone receiving something they didn't earn, of someone receiving something that they did not, that they weren't supposed to inherit. So in John chapter 4, verse 6, we see Jesus tired from his long walk from Samaria. And he stops at 12 o'clock at Jacob's well to get a drink of water. And right on time, the Samaritan woman comes to draw her water. She has her bucket in hand. Her hair is probably a mess because she's busy. And she's probably set sweating from walking to get some water with her bucket in the middle of the afternoon. Now, we live in Miami, so we know how hot 12 o'clock is. I know that I'm not going for a jog or going to go garden in the backyard or do anything outside at 12 o'clock because it is just so hot. But John chapter 4, verse 10 says, if you only knew. Now, why is this 12 o'clock moment so important? 
Well, scripture doesn't say, but I happen to be married to a Bible theologian, and he studies scripture so much, and he kind of walked me through a little bit of the history of this time. And, like, if you go to my house and you see his, like, little office space, you'd see, like, these book, these long bookshelves just filled with commentaries. So commentaries are these big volume books, like, they have multiple volumes of theologians who have studied history and study scripture and comment on scripture, just giving you a little bit more backstory. If you're into scripture and, like, history, this is right up your alley. There's even apps now for Bible commentary, which is really cool. Um, but I was sat down with Pastor Rich, and he was just talking to me a little bit more about the history of that time. You see, she was a Samaritan woman, and she was so surprised that Jesus was talking to her because Samaritans were kind of rejected at that time. They were not everyone's favorite people. So instead of being a pure, a pure blood descendant, Samaritans were people who were, who married, who were, who were from couples that married out, Right? So she's not really already, from the day she was born, walking in an identity that says, I'm worthy. She was already born with shame just because of the title Samaritan, right? And this 12 o'clock appointment, it seems, a little, it seems a little weird that she would walk out of her house at 12 o'clock when it's the hottest part of the day. The water's going to get hot. You're going to get hot. It's just going to be harder for you. But if there's any introverts in the room, you know that walking to a place where you're going to see a bunch of people you know is, like, not your favorite thing, right? Any introverts in the room who hate bumping into people at Publix? Not me. I don't understand you. I'm an extrovert. I love bumping into people, and I love talking to everybody. I get ready to go to Publix because I know I'm going to see somebody there, and we're going to have a great time. Um, but anyway, 12 o'clock comes around, and she is walking out to get water. So history tells us that she wouldn't have, no one her in her situation would have ever walked out at that time. So it makes me believe, knowing her history of having five husbands, that she doesn't really want to bump into anyone. It makes me believe that, that she doesn't really want to be seen or have to have that long, drawn-out conversation about what she's doing or who she's with, right? So when she gets to the well and Jesus is there waiting for her, she looks at him and says, why are you talking to me? Point number one was the journey to the well. If you're writing notes, point number two is the encounter at the well. So today I firmly believe that Jesus had an appointment with her that day. And I firmly believe that Jesus today had an appointment with you. I know that there are people that came to church today that had such a hard time getting here that like had decided in their minds that they were going to come to church on Mother's Day, but for some reason everything in the universe was not making it possible for you to be here and somehow you made it. Amen? And I believe that's because God has an appointment with you today and that you being here right now is going to be a special time in your life because Jesus has been waiting for you just like Jesus was waiting for the woman at the well. Revelations chapter 3 verse 20 says that he stands at the door and knocks. It means that he's pursuing you. And I'll let you in on a secret. When we open that door that he's been knocking at, our life changes. Right. Scripture says that when you open the door to Jesus, that there's a party going on in heaven in your name. It says that you're a child of God. Scripture says that you're a son and a daughter of the Most High King. It says that the creator of all the universe wrote your name in his book of life. This is what Scripture says when we open the door to Jesus. Scripture says that we inherit blessings. That we inherit promises that we didn't earn. It says that we have now the opportunity to spend eternity in the presence of God. Amen. At the gates of heaven are open to us. And as we open this door, we open the door of our heart to Jesus. He comes in. And what happens when he comes in, he sees everything that we've had inside. Right? And so this encounter for the woman at the well sounded something like what we just read in verse 16. 
go and get your husband. And she's much a better woman than I am because I would have been like, no, I don't, I don't have a husband. I don't know what you're talking about. And just like got in my bucket and walked away. But instead, this woman at the well dove in and she said, actually, I'll read it. He says, go and get your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband for you've had five husbands and you aren't even married to the one you're with now. And you certainly spoke the truth. So what's happening here is the process of sanctification for this woman. She's faced with the reality of what's inside her heart. She's faced with the truth of her life. And even though it's ugly and even though it's hard, this is her well moment with Jesus, right? And she, instead of fighting that, she does kind of challenge his theology, which is strange, like knowing he's Jesus. Like how are you going to challenge his theology about where we worship? But we challenge God all the time in our minds. Um, she admits to everything that he's saying. And she has a moment with Jesus where she is filled with living water, right? Where the Bible says that the living water that Jesus is talking about is a representation of the spirit of God that is now living inside of her. And she is in a victory moment. She is on a mountaintop, amen. Have we ever been there with Jesus? That we're in a, in a service where the Lord is just ministering to our hearts. The Holy Spirit is working inside of us. And we feel a victory. We feel like God is so good right now. We are on a mountaintop. You have saved me from my sin. Well, scripture talks so much about mountaintop moments. Here are a few. In Genesis chapter, if you're writing notes, there's a lot of scripture. Write it down and read it later. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, Isaac is spared from being sacrificed. God offers another sacrifice so that he does not have to be sacrificed on a mountaintop. Matthew 17, verse 1 through 9, Peter, James, and John hear the audible voice of God on a mountaintop. On this very mountaintop, they see Jesus and Elijah talking. Elijah was dead, not alive. His spirit is there. They're experiencing this moment on a mountaintop. In Exodus chapter 19, we hear of the story of Moses going up a mountain and experiencing the glory of God, the visible, the visible glory of God, hearing God's voice, having God give him direction for him and his people, giving him the Ten Commandments, right? What a moment with God. And so mountaintops might be your goal, right? Right? Mountaintops may be what you see and what you envision yourself. I want to be there. You know, growing up, to tell you the truth, when I thought of a mountaintop, I thought of like the mountain climbers that like do Mount Everest. Have you guys ever seen those pictures? They look like astronauts with all the gear they have on. And it's like a, fro like a frozen beard, you know, frozen eyelashes. And they're like with a the, with the flag on the top of Mount Everest. I, I never had any interest in being there. I never had any interest in climbing any of that. Um, actually, when I was a kid, I saw a lot of pictures of valleys. And if you've ever been to a valley, or you've seen a, one of those pictures that I'm thinking of in my head, it kind of looks like, um, you know, a valley between two mountains. There's a stream flowing through. There's like nice sunshine peeking through the trees. There's plants and flowers. It's a deer drinking water. You know, this is what I imagined. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see it in your mind? This is what I imagined when I saw a valley, right? But here's what scripture says about valleys. Anybody know Psalm 23? Psalm 23 says that the valley is where you're made to lie down. Psalm 23 is that the valley is where we need to be still. The valley is where we need to be restored. And let me tell you something, we wouldn't need restoration unless we were old and used up. I've been there so many times, needing restoration. Psalm 23 says that it's also where fear tempts us. Psalm 23 says that it's where we need comfort. It says that right here in this valley is where we are surrounded by our enemies. 
Scripture says this is where we need to be anointed. But Scripture also says that this is the righteous path where goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen? Psalm 95, verse 3 through 5, says that the mountaintops and the valleys are both his. And thinking back to my well moment, the moment where I was in need of Jesus, where I was in need of an appointment with Jesus. Maybe you can think about your well moment. The moment you walked up with your bucket, knowing you needed something, knowing you needed your thirst to be quenched. And we encountered the Savior. Point number three is that, point number three is the transformation from the well. Point number one was the journey to the well. Point number two was the encounter at the well. And point number three is the transformation from the well. So some of us today are standing at that well, at our 12 o'clock appointment with Jesus, bucket in hand. Having walked with so many labels, so many identities already stuck to you, so many decisions about yourself, what you were worthy for, or what you were good enough to do. But this time, this Samaritan woman had to go back home, and she started walking back a little different. She started walking back to town and left her bucket behind. She started walking back to town with her chin up, with a little pep in her step with a new confidence about who she was. The shame that she walked to the well with stayed with her bucket, stayed behind at the well, and this time she walked back into town with something new. She walked back into, into town with a story to tell. She walked back into town with a story of redemption. So, as many times as I preach this scripture, I actually never got to verse 39. John chapter 4, verse 39 says that this Samaritan woman walked back into town and started telling everyone of what just happened. This girl, I mean, people knew her. They knew what she had done. They knew her story. They knew how many times she messed up. And she walked back with confidence because she knew that if God did it for her, that he could do it for you. She knew that if God had transformed her heart and filled her with something new, that she had to share it. And scripture says in verse 39, that revival began to break out in her town, that people in her city ran out to find Jesus, and that for two days, Jesus couldn't leave because they were pursuing him and pursuing him, and people were getting saved and finding Jesus to be their savior. They were able to taste the water that she had tasted. They were able to be filled with the water that made their flesh never thirst again. And this woman, this Samaritan woman, changed her city forever. We see revival. Amen. Your story is important. Your story is not a story of shame. Her story is not that she was married five times and that was living that she was living with the man she wasn't married to. Her story is that God redeemed her. Her story is that she's filled with the living water. Her story is that she's the daughter of a king. Her story is not what she messed up with. Her story is not where she broke. Her story is that she's saved. Amen. And this is our story today. Let's go ahead and stand up on our feet. Right where we are, right where you are in your seats, if we could all just calm ourselves, close our eyes, bow our heads. Jesus is knocking today at the door of your heart. He is knocking today at your heart. And he's been sitting at the well waiting for you. Just waiting for the timing of life to lead you to your well moment. With all heads bowed, 
all heads bowed and all eyes closed, today we're going to say a prayer accepting Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior. This prayer will fill us with living water that will never make us thirst again. And we're going to pray it together with all heads bowed and all eyes closed. If you have never said the prayer of salvation, if you have never publicly decided and told Jesus, God, I need you to be the Lord of my life. I'm a sinner that needs saving. This moment is for you. So in the count of three all across this room, if you have never said that prayer and this is your moment, you know that God is knocking at your door and you feel like this is your time. In the count of three, you're going to just raise your hand up in the air. One, two, three. Hands are going up all across this room. I see you. Amen. Amen. If you have said this prayer before, but you know very well that you have gone back to the water that satisfies your flesh, this is a moment for you. But we're going to turn to not drink water that satisfies our flesh, but we're going to drink the water that will never make us thirst again. We're going to turn from sin, turn from temptation, and walk to Jesus that's waiting for us at the well doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been going to church. It doesn't matter if you serve in ministry. If this moment is for you in the count of three, you're going to raise your hand with all heads bowed and all eyes closed. One, two, three. Put your hand in the air. God is good. Amen. 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 I see you. You can put your hands down. God is good. Church, we're going to pray together. But before we pray together, I want to take a second to pray over some of us in this room. Some of us who are in our process of sanctification, who are pursuing to be more and more like Jesus every day. And it's hard letting God in and having him deal with our sin and our past and our shame. If you need comfort today, if you feel like you've sur been surrounded by your enemies, or if you feel like you've been tempted with fear and you're in a valley, in the count of three, you're going to raise your hands, keep them up, and I'm just going to pray over you from right here. One, two, three. Go ahead and put your hands in the air if that's you today. Father, today we pray over this congregation. In Jesus' name, we declare, Father, that your power of protection is around every single person with their hands up. God, that the prayers of a community would come around them when they're in their homes, when they're at their workplace, when temptation is trying to seep into their lives. Father, we declare in Jesus' name that for every person with their hands up, the plan of the enemy will not prosper. That the plan that the enemy has to steal, kill, and destroy your legacy will not prosper, but that you are protected protected right now with the name of G by the name of Jesus that God's protection would just come around you right now that the lies of the enemy would begin to fade from your ears and that you would hear the truth that the Lord has to say about you in Jesus name amen and now for all the salvation hands that went up we are going to pray with you as a congregation, so you're going to go ahead and repeat after me. But the rest of the congregation that's here is going to support you in prayer and in celebration because today there is a party going on here and going on in heaven in your name. So let's repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. I, believe I believe that you died for me, died for me. and resurrected three days later. I believe that you waited for me at the well. That it didn't matter what my story looked like. And you still took me in. God, today I open the door to you. And welcome you into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Every salvation, for every wind, for every mountaintop. Amen.
some, as we take some time, we're just going to walk back into a moment of worship. Our prayer team is going to be right up here um, to my left and to my right. If you need prayer today, if you need someone to stand alongside of you, uh, we're going to have a moment for that. If you just want to hold hands and pray with someone, amen. We're going to head back into worship. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, that even as we've lived our lives and planned for certain things, Lord, you interrupted and you met us. And you gave us grace. You gave us mercy. I thank you today, Lord, that we can exchange our shame and we can give you the pen of our lives and allow you to finish our story. You are the author. You are the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. And we bless you today. We bless you today. We glorify you today. And Father, our prayer as we walk out of this church service today, Lord, is that you continue to lead us that you continue to restore, that you continue to lead us by the hand, that you remind us, Father, that we have a story to tell of where we've encountered this goodness and this living water. And we thank you. We bless you. Church, can we just give Jesus an ovation of praise this morning? We thank you. awesome. I pray you were blessed today. I pray you go back and in your own study this week, you just study John 4 on your own because we all identify with John 4. We are all that Samaritan standing at the well. And that's the good news of the gospel, isn't it? That way before we got there, he was already there. 
that before we thought we needed him, he already provided the atonement. Come on, he already provided grace and mercy for you and me. And that's who Abba is. That's who our Father is. Amen. What a day. I just want to honor Pastor Tina this morning. We love you. I love you. You're amazing. And I can speak for everybody in this community of how blessed we are because of you. We're all better because of you and the way you lead and the way you pastor with so much grace. And the cadence that you operate in is just a blessing to see. And so we bless you. We thank you. And uh, we honor you this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Church, there's a lot happening outside. I pray you continue to just have a day of celebration and that you allow this community to be a blessing unto you. Amen. We're going to put our benediction prayer on screen. So church, let's pray these words with faith this morning. Come on, as you walk out of here with the Lord's blessing, pray, pray with me. The Lord bless me and keep me. The Lord make his face shine on me and be gracious to me. The Lord turn his face toward me and give me peace. Church, we love you. We will see you next Sunday. God bless you.